The almond is the very first tree to flower. It blossoms in the midst of winter, generally in February, and is therefore seen by many to herald the arrival of spring. Spring is known throughout the world as the time of revival and resurrection. The almond, therefore, represents hope for restoration of a new life after the cold winter. It was late February 1992, just as the almond trees had scattered their blossoms throughout the small town of Hojali, that it played witness to the snow turning an unnatural color of red. Relentless persecution and mass killing of Jews, both in Germany and in countries occupied by the Nazis, is considered to be one of the terrifying chapters in world history. The tragedy resulting in the genocide of six million Jews is well known by a word which sounds similar in all languages, Holocaust. On the 10th of June, 1944, 642 inhabitants of the village of oradour sur glane France, were brutally murdered. In 1994, in 100 days, one country became a massive graveyard for almost one million people. The name of the small country located in Central Africa is Rwanda. On the 11th of July, 1995, in one of the not well-known towns of Europe, more than 8,000 men and boys were massacred. Now we all know the name of this town, Srebrenica. Over the night of 25th and 26th February 1992, 613 people, including 106 women and 63 children, were killed with an unseen cruelty and unimaginable savagery in one town of Azerbaijan. The name of that town is Khojali. The similarity of all the above-mentioned events is that victims were targeted only because they belonged to a certain ethnic group or nation, as Jews in Europe, French in Oradour, Tutsis in Rwanda, Bosnians in Srebrenica, and Azerbaijanis in Khojali. Before the Khojali tragedy, when the Soviet Union was on the verge of collapse, Armenian terrorist organizations systematically and methodically perpetrated bloody atrocities and countless acts of terrorism against civilian population of Azerbaijan. After the signing of the Gulistan and Turkmenchai treaties in 1813 and 1828 respectively, there was a very rapid mass resettlement of Armenians to Azerbaijani lands and a subsequent artificial division of territory. Although the Armenian incomers constituted a small minority in the region, they soon pursued a policy of political expansion and devised aggressive plans for its implementation. In the 1920s, although the mountainous part of Karabakh was retained within Azerbaijan, it was nevertheless given the status of autonomy, with its administrative borders defined in such a way as to ensure that the Armenian population constituted a majority. Thus, an artificial entity was created within Azerbaijan, while more than half a million Azerbaijanis living compactly in Armenia at the time were refused the same privilege. Having breached international norms and principles and still effective Soviet laws, in early 1988, Armenia started aggressive actions against Azerbaijan to implement the long-standing plan to unilaterally secede this administrative territory and annex it to Armenia. In late 1991 and early 1992, Armed hostilities and Armenian attacks on Azerbaijan intensified. Khojali, a town in the Nagorno-Karabakh region with a total area of 0.94 square kilometers and a population before the conflict of 7,000, mostly Azerbaijanis, became the target of one of these operations. Having the only civil airport in the area, Khojali was an important center of communications. From October 1991, the town was entirely surrounded by Armenian forces. On the 30th of October, the ground traffic was cut off and helicopter became the only means of transportation. When a civilian helicopter was brought down over Shusha city, killing 40 people, helicopter traffic also ceased. From January 1992, the town had no electricity. Khojali lived on due to the courage of people and the heroism of its defenders. By occupying Khojali, the Armenian forces aimed to gain strategic advantage and favorable conditions for capturing other Azerbaijani inhabited cities of the Nagorno-Karabakh region. They also aimed at wiping Khojali off the face of the earth, since traces of history in Khojali and surrounding areas represented historical evidence refuting Armenian territorial claims. The idea behind the Armenian brutality was to break the spirit of Azerbaijanis to gain psychological advantage in subsequent military operations. 
Over the night of 25th to 26th February 1992, following a massive artillery bombardment, Armenian armed forces and paramilitary units, with the support of the former Soviet Union's 366 motorized infantry regiment, moved in to seize the town. Those launching the assault knew very well about the absence of serious military equipment and fortifications in Khajali. Despite that, the town had been encircled and shelled with heavy artillery. Once the assault began, around 2,500 remaining inhabitants tried to leave with the hope to reach the nearest area under Azerbaijani's control. But they hoped in vain. Armenia had spread rumors that allegedly a humanitarian corridor was left open for peaceful population to leave the town. However, soon it turned out that the claimed corridor was nothing but an ominous trap. The fleeing people were either killed by gunfire from Armenian military posts or captured near the villages of Nakhchivanli and Pirjamal. Others, mainly women and children, died from frostbite while wandering in the mountains. Only a few were able to reach Ardam. Undoubtedly, what happened in Hojali was the largest massacre of the conflict. In all, the assault and capture of the town took the lives of 613 of its people, including 106 women, 63 children, and 70 elderly. 1,275 were taken hostage, while the fate of 150 people remains unknown. The town was razed to the ground. In the course of that tragic night, 487 inhabitants of Hojali were wounded, including 76 children. Eight families were completely wiped out. 130 children lost one parent and 26 children lost both. Of those who perished, 56 were killed with particular cruelty. They were variously burned alive, beheaded, or had eyes gouged out. Pregnant women were bayoneted in the abdomen. One of the ideologists of the Hojale genocide, Serge Sarkisyan, who afterwards became president of the Republic of Armenia, made a blunt confession in his interview to British journalist Thomas Deval. Before Khojali, the Azerbaijanis thought that they were joking with us. They thought that the Armenians were people who could not raise their hand against the civilian population. We were able to break that. Undeniably, this was an unprecedented example for breaking a stereotype from all wars that the history of mankind has ever witnessed. Unfortunately, the genocide in Azerbaijani town of Khojali was not an isolated and standalone act. In fact, the level of brutality and the atrocities committed in Khojali set a pattern of destruction that Armenian troops adhered to for the rest of the conflict. The official investigation conducted in Azerbaijan has found the inherent elements to qualify the acts committed in Khojali as the crime of genocide, as defined under international law including in particular the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. These actions against the peaceful population also fragrantly violate norms and principles of international humanitarian and human rights law, including the Geneva Conventions of 1949 and their additional protocols and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Over the past few years, the international community has made significant strides towards recognition of the genocide in Khojali. So far, the legislative bodies of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Colombia, the Czech Republic, Honduras, Jordan, Mexico, Pakistan, Panama, Peru, Romania, and Sudan, as well as from more than 10 states in the United States of America, have adopted parliamentary resolutions on recognition of the Khojali genocide. More than two decades after the Khojali genocide, our grief and our outrage over the atrocities committed has not diminished. Our hearts are broken, but our spirits are not. We took our lessons from history and chose the path of development. Despite being involved in this conflict, Azerbaijan has undergone a period of rapid socio-economic development in recent years. Today, Azerbaijan has proved itself as a reliable international partner and regional leader. Major regional and cross-regional projects initiated by Azerbaijan have not only boosted our own economic growth, but have also contributed to the development of our region. We are a proud nation with ancient history and traditions a country which has always been a place of tolerance and safe haven for different ethnic groups and national minorities. We believe that our shared values of humanity can only be preserved by our joint efforts. We also believe that one day justice will triumph and the occupied territories of Azerbaijan will be freed so that the millions of IDPs and refugees will get the chance to return to their historical homes. We must keep alive the memory of those victims who lost their lives 
and those victims who have been deeply affected psychologically and physically. We remember the Khojale genocide for today and for the future of the mankind. We recall the Khojale genocide so that no crime against humanity should be committed ever again. We are not seeking revenge. We demand justice. Justice for Khojale. <laughs>